Hello everyone, this is Modified Darvis Box MDB. Um, I was away for the weekend on a trip, got back here late, and I figured as I catch up to charts and, and shit to uh, make a video, and uh, even though uh, by tomorrow morning this will be old, old news, but I thought I'd still do a video just because, honestly, I haven't reviewed uh, any charts at the moment, and uh, I'm already long... Quite a, on quite a few stocks, but I uh, thought I'd just do it in review. If you enjoy it, great. If not, no worries. Um, so where are we here? <clears throat> so anybody who's never watched me before, uh, I trade and invest using uh, a version of the Darvis box system from the book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. It's probably, in my opinion, the best trading book out there. I encourage everyone to read it. If you haven't already um, but uh, I've also added a few extra modifications but what I'm doing is I'm looking for signals and things here on the right side of the chart and uh, to see if there's anything actionable anything breaking out or anything that's breaking down which we need to avoid and you know heap abuse on that one so let's get into it. Uh, I've got six watch lists here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's how I arrange. And I'm constantly moving stock tickers between the various watch lists. And I would encourage you all to do the same. It's, a, it, it's sort of a form of relative strength as well. The good stocks go on the good list. The lukewarm stocks go on the, the moderate lists. And the bad stocks go on the bad lists. Good way of keeping them keeping track of them all right let's get into it so i always start with the amz this is uh mlps with for income i've got a separate income portfolio and i've got some of these in them and you can see here i'm managing these for the long term so i'm using that weekly moving average while i i love it when they go up and i hate it when they go down everything's just fine on this one uh, according to the moving average <clears throat> So we had the big rally two weeks ago, and then this past week was sort of a pullback, and it, which makes more than enough sense, you know, to expect that because it was a really big one. And you can see on the colors of my charts, I've got special colors uh, with language formulas attached to the bars so that the bars change color when certain things happen. And by doing this, I can read the chart very easily and quickly at a glance. And the blue here shows a big, very bullish move, but many times when there's a blue, it means excessive exuberance. Like if there were people on the sidelines waiting to buy, guess what? They all stepped in and bought. And many times the problem is uh, when that exuberance happens, there's nobody else uh, coming after them. Like all the bulls are in, and then they sort of like charging a machine gun. They all get slaughtered, uh, used up, and then there's nothing behind them. And you can see a perfect example right here, back in history, had a big up day, but then no follow through. And that's, that's a tendency. It's not a guarantee, but it's a tendency of the, when I see the blue bars. We have another example here back in November. And I'm using ARC as an example, but just because it's good examples to show. But blue, no follow through blue no follow through so that's what you got to be careful when you see one of these now context and interpretation sometimes when you get that signal after let's say a long sideways trend sometimes that's a launch signal it means go time so you've got a uh, uh in this context look we had a one two three four whoopsie uh, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five, a six week downtrend and now a big up up one. Is that a signal to go out and le leverage up and mortgage your house? Well, not really, B unless you've got really good stocks that are breaking out. But uh, that's how you got to keep everything in context. Oil, this is a proxy for oil. Oil going sideways. Oil's been coming in. And, you know, a big argument on oil is that if the economy is slowing, demand for oil goes down. 
So that'll be the argument here. Is it going down because of maybe a recession or is it going down for other reasons? I, I think probably the economy is slowing down, but stocks care more about profitability than other factors. And as we saw from these earnings reports the last couple of weeks, the NASDAQ and technology companies are just earning money hand over fist. They just make piles and piles of money. So it makes sense that the NASDAQ would rebound hard. And we see it did. Two weeks ago, it was heading down and then whoop, back up into the box. And now it, it had a follow through week here on, uh, let's see, earlier in the last few days, it was forming maybe a bearish pattern. But damn, on Friday, look at that, that big move on Friday. That was the bulls making a statement. So right now, while I wouldn't call this a brand new <clears throat> bull market, this is a definitely a nice recovery. And look, it's back up above my weekly moving average. It's back into the middle of its Darvis box, which maybe will lengthen it, make it a little bigger, something like that. And uh, definitely, that, it's definitely recovered. Uh, this one, Ethereum, crypto's in a bull market. Look at that. Boy, I should have bought Ethereum because there's the textbook box breakout. And this is from the Darvis book where it goes sideways and then bursts through the level. That's what I'm trying to capture. Now, I did not buy this here because crypto, that's Ethereum. <clears throat> but anybody who did, well, you're sitting on a almost 50% gain. That's pretty good for after, what, four weeks? Not too shabby. Uh, let's see. FFTY this is a proxy for growth stocks. Uh, not much of a recovery, but you see this, this light gray bar right here? That's called an inside week where price was inside the prior bar. The way you play them is it's just like a mini box. Where's the line, either top or the bottom? And you buy when it when it uh, uh, hits. And there's a buy signal, not not the strongest signal there. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't be taking that. But let's say you wanted to trade it and go long. Yeah, sure. There there's your signal right there. So growth is a little bit of an uptrend. What's this? China still super sideways. You know, f China. Who cares? I'll never buy Chinese stocks. I don't buy them at all. I avoid them like the plague. They're all they're all frauds. Um, here we go. Bitcoin box breakout and whoosh. You see, I bought it here at the blue circle, and we're making money. It's going up. <clears throat> A good successful breakout trade gave you plenty of time to get into it. In fact, look at that. Saw the breakout, we had we had a, a, at least a week, the next week to be buying into it. And then once you bought into it, then it just took off. So many times on a breakout, you'd get plenty of chances to buy it. You don't have to be like buying the moment it takes off. Gold, gold here fit, had a failure. Look at that, inside week and then a negative uh, a downside trigger from that signal. So gold just went up, it just couldn't hack it and went back down. But gold is a really tough, tough commodity to trade. All commodities are tough, I think. Um, this here was a buying opportunity here. This, the circle, that's colored the tan because that's called a hammer pattern. And there's your signal, hammer pattern. Uh, and you're always, you don't have to buy during the signal. You buy after the signal. After the signal has been logged, then you react to the signal. And on that one, you could have had a trade, or if you were trading that, you would have been buying here. And I was code buys in blue. <clears throat> and then you would have been selling here. Let's code sells red. I always code them as red. And you would have been selling right here. Not bad for a short-term trade, huh? But that's if you follow these types of signals. So I, I did not trade gold. But, but if you're wondering how to trade the market, that's how you trade the market. 
you follow the signals. Now, if you miss this signal here in the blue, you still had a signal up here on the box breakout. And this is how roughly I might have played it. Now, if you bought it here on the box breakout, well, now you stopped out and you probably only made like a dollar or two. You only made a little bit of money, but you're still profitable. And that's the thing. If you're going to act in the market, make money. Don't lose money. Whatever you do, just don't lose money. And the way you don't lose money is you buy high probability trading signals. You see the signal and then you react to the signal. And the biggest question is, is are your trading signals any good? That's the big question everybody should be working on. Like here, here's a yellow bar buy signal. The yellow bars do work on growth stocks. On other stuff, they show up and then they fizzle out. Like here, signal, eh, fizzle. Signal, eh, didn't really do anything. So all these would have been go nowhere stop outs. But, you know, I wouldn't have bought HYG anyways because look, the volume's too low. I want big volume. Now here's one, which is this, IGV. This is a box breakout, textbook breakout here. And it's a, it's a ETF for software. So of course it's breaking out. But look at this, box breakdown here. Everybody got depressed and scared. Finally got wore out. And then whoosh, immediately right back up. Yellow bar buy signal with a big follow through and now a big, big box breakout. And you know what? You could buy the breakout, but the yellow signal would have gotten you in sooner. Like you could have been buying anywhere in there and you'd be ahead of the game because you would have seen the signal and then you would have reacted to it and uh, been nice and nice and profitable at that point. That's how you do it. That's trading, baby. I bet anybody watching this is like nodding their head. Yeah, I totally see that. Are you willing to adopt this type of method into your, uh, uh, into your system? That's the $64,000 question. Or are you going to use constantly like 10 different moving averages? Personally, I found using multiple moving averages to be extremely confusing. Which moving average am I supposed to use? If it breaks one, am I, am I supposed to buy it at the moving average or sell it? I, I just don't, never knew what to do with it. So here I gauge moving averages just above good, below, not so good. You know, red light, red light, green light. That's, I code my bars. If it's above the moving average, they're green. If it's below the moving average, they're red. That's how I use colors to help me understand what kind of environment uh, and maybe the probabilities uh, are going to be. So look at this ITB, that's housing. God, it was a downtrend for one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, almost nine weeks of downtrend. And then bam, takes back a huge chunk of it, ironically, right to the bottom of the prior box. And, uh, and now it's sort of hanging out here. Amazing how the market works. You could be convinced that housing is going into the gutter because of interest rates. You're selling it all down here and then bam, blammo, in one week, it makes up half the gain, half the loss, excuse me. This is also what makes trading and investing so freaking difficult. Like, that, uh, that's so unfair. But... The question would be, well, were all these people wrong here in the in this six six weeks period from box breakdown? I don't know. But it's stuff like this that makes it so difficult. And it doesn't have to be this difficult. But if we just follow signals, we usually stay out of trouble. Uh, let's keep going here. Need to get going on this faster. IWM. Box breakdown, big recovery into in, back into the box. And then look at this. It gave back half of that gain. That's because IWM sucks and is very weak. So we see the signal does not mean we have to take the signal. 
And in fact, you're better off taking signals on stuff that's very strong and not weak. And so we there, nothing here. Oh, recovery. See, lots of recoveries. Here we go, QQQ, tech, tech is the place. Big recovery, yellow bar signal, and now look at that. It's moving up for a breakout. RSP, recovery, but hasn't recovered up to the box level. This is more representative, equal weight S&P. This is more representative of General America. And while tech is doing great, General America is still struggling a bit. Unfortunately, this is like your average stocks and dividend payers and stuff and, you know, like trust stocks. Um, let's see. Here we go. The shy, the bonds. Good indication of inflation. Blue bar. What did we talk say about enthusiasm? Excess enthusiasm. What happens? We ran out of buyers. Now, granted, this one over here on the chart, this one worked. Excessive and then even more excessiveness, but it didn't go, it didn't, it didn't last. It didn't stick into, into higher prices. Instead, it gave it all up. Petered out. Um, semiconductors, yep, there's that rebound. Now, what's interesting here on semiconductors is, boy, this is, they got shaken baked here. Look at the selling here. Sell, sell, big sells, and then move right back up once they were done selling. It's not fair. It's very hard. But here's the thing. You're playing something that's breaking down and getting negative, and then back to positive all the time. I mean, this is a hard zone. Normally, it would break down, and you think, well, that's the end of the world. We're coming down here to like 109 or 110. So it's lower probability when you're messing around down in this area, whereas your probability is better when you're up like right there. So if you think this market is incredibly hard, yeah, it's hard, but you may be making it even harder by accident without, without knowing it. So maybe maybe that's the theme of this video is to is to go back to your own charts and be like, am I making things easier or harder? Um, I was chatting with somebody in the DMs and uh, basically I said, simplify your charts until signals become very clear whether it's a yes or a no. Yes or no. And if it's inconclusive, don't do anything. Uh, here's the S&P 500, recovers up into sort of the box level, but it's not a brand new box. So it's sort of trash, just going trashy sideways. But so long as it's not crashing, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, sentiment, <laughs> look at that. I, I posted a great chart on Twitter a couple of weeks ago and I said, this is not normal. And look at that, sentiment came right back down. Uh, normally we're selling up here because this is this is this is marking extremes in sentiment. Uh, this one, this is another sentiment meter. Here we go. This is the one I put. Percent of stocks above the 40-day moving average. This is not normal. This big green, but there's some of the pullback. So, but the sentiment lows held up here. When it starts getting down here, 10, 15, 20, 25, that's where you got to start thinking about, man, is it time to be buying? Uh, oh, the solar, look at that. <laughs> solar is such a piece of crap that we had the blue bar signal. Yay, excessive, you know, optimism. Everybody who thought solar was the greatest thing ever, well, when all the market was moving up, they went... This is it. And they bought and they spent all their bullets. What happened? There's nobody left coming behind them. And it almost gives it all back. Just shows you what a piece of crap the tan is, the whole solar sector is. If you're looking to short something, short solar. Uh, what is this, TLT? Yep, this could be a bottom. Look at all the volume in here. I mean, look at that. That's huge. 
But you know what? Volume is one thing, but look, price hasn't moved much either. What if this starts going back down again? Then all these people are fooked. And they'll be puking it out. So we'll see. That's buying bottoms. That's hard. What do we got here? Uranium. Yeah. There's an inside weak signal right here. But I'm not really interested in URA. I'd buy a, a stock CCJ on that one. The VIX, big move down. Who cares about the VIX? Commercial real estate. A recovery. Recovered back into the box and now come down. But is this a new bull market here? At the moment, the only really good bullish stuff we've seen is technology. What's the difference between this versus that? Oh, it should be freaking obvious. Tech is the place to be. If you don't believe that, well, then you're not doing this right. Uh, home builders. Yep, look at that. Recovery. But just simply recovered to the bottom of the box level. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? What a, what a coincidence, huh? I tell you, there's more to this than meets the eye. What's this? Oh, XLE, yep, energy going down, box breakdown right there. Volume is light, so we'll see what that is, but we'll see what develops there. Uh, okay, let's get into stocks. Oh, I'm going to have to move around a lot. Okay, AMD, box breakout with a yellow bar signal, and it's been moving higher. If you were a buyer here, yeah, you should be making money. Uh, AMR, well, there's a signal. Look at here. Signal, big volume. Look at the volume. I think they were added to an index or something. But there's a signal right there. So, draw a line across the top. If it, if it hits, uh, what is that, 230 or so? If it hits up there, buy it. Buy it. If it doesn't hit trigger, don't buy it. ANET box breakout. There it is right here. Big volume. This is a hard one to trade. Look at that pull that comeback. You bought it at 215 and now you're losing money. You're down 10 points on one of the more bullish stocks on the market. That is frustrating as frack. CCJ. I'm long this one. I was a buyer in here. Boy, I had a real nervous moment when this pulled back in uh, down here, but price totally recovered. So, phew. That was a close one. Uh, Dash. Dash is not a breakdown, a, a breakout. It did two weeks ago right here on the yellow bar, but then it pulled back hard, in fact, harder than we want. And see, I bought it and I got stopped out with a little bit of a gain. Nothing, nothing I'd write home about, but we're going to put this out of this list because this list number two is the best of the best. And we're going to put it in list three, which is bullish, but not the best. DKNG, box breakout, yellow bar, very bullish. Two bars in a row of green. I hate to say it, but that's very, very, very positive. I don't really like this company much. It's got 450, 464 million shares outstanding. It's what I call a fat whale. It's very hard to make money in this as a stock investor. Nothing wrong with the company, although I don't like how it promotes gambling. Uh, average Americans shouldn't be sports gambling, in my opinion. And the way they advertise at football games, it's just it's just despicable. Because there's people out there who, uh, you know, might have ser developed serious gambling problems. I mean, stocks is a gambling problem. You got to be careful about that also. Uh, Ethereum, yeah, we already talked about that. Fro, oh, so Fro is box breakout right here. 
one, two, three, four, and now it's giving us a pink bar signal. This signal here means pay attention. It doesn't necessarily mean sell, although you could sell, take your profit. It really is saying be on your toes. So if we draw a line underneath that, be on your toes because it might start going the other direction. But you don't know that. So if you are long, you'd want to be watching very closely. You're developing a game plan. What do I do? The daily on this looks, eh, it looks kind of fine, but there's an inside day right there. Got to be careful. But it's showing a signal. So that's how the colors on my chart might tell me what to do. But I don't own it, so it's not my problem. Uh, there's the geo. Uh-oh. Blue bar signal. We know what that means. It's at 934. Well, we'll see if it keeps going up or if it drops back down. The, while the news, store, news flow on this stock is great, I don't think the earnings have shown up again. Look, look how it's riding the Bollinger Band. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I'm not long. I don't have a position. PLTR going up, box breakout. And then look here, it's the blue bar, but instead of coming back down, it had a little bit of tough toughness above the box, but it's, it's definitely recovered. Uh, I'm long this one. Not easy. And then there's the red line, which I, I had the red line as a resistance, like a monthly resistance. But it looks like it's about to... You know, maybe clear that and look, green volume, green volume. There's only one week of big red volume right here. So the overall picture of PLTR still looks very, very bullish. Nothing wrong with it. RMBS, <clears throat> box breakout and continuation looks fine. I think you have noticed how all these setups look exactly the same. Gee, is that a coincidence? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's a coincidence. Not a coincidence. But hey, you know, just trade your pattern. One pa same pattern again and again and again. Amazon moving up. No real signals. No new boxes. Bros. BROS. I bought a little bit of this in here. Eh, I don't know whether it's going to do anything or come back down. Notice how it had good earnings right in here, but eh, there's no real boxes. You know, I may be selling this one. Sell H. I've got to update my trades here because I traded and bought and sold this one. I bought it in there. And I bought and sold this a couple of different times. And I bought it in there and then I sold it again. So it looks sort of like that. I'll have to update the precision, the precise ones. But I did a lot of trading in Cell H. And I was lucky to make money in it, but boy, it was a mess. Um, let's get the, let's clear these out so I can show you a little bit more. So, if you look here, made a strong move, but then whoo, here's the earnings day. Pink bar signals. Remember, pay attention. Something's happening. The next day. It was a total huge range and closed in the middle. Honestly, not very good. And it's also an inside day. This day here, another inside day. And now a little bit of a downwards resolution. And look at the volume. Sellers here, not so many buyers. It's running out of gas. So these are all reasons why I sold. So... I traded it during the earnings, and but I was a net seller overall. And I think, based on the chart view, volume, 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 
Whoa! Big red volume. It just goes to show that, that this stock is not yet ready at this moment for a sustained new move back to 200. I bought it here back in April, sold it up here, here in September, traded a couple more times, made some good money. But nope, I don't own it. Not now. Coin making a strong move, yellow bar signal. But it's still inside its Darvis box. So no trade there. There's Dash. God, I can't I can't believe that Dash failed. I thought they did great, but oh well, high hopes. Now maybe maybe it uh, it it sets up and does a breakout in the future. I don't know. But normally when you get a green followed by a big red. That just tells you that instead of punching buy tickets, when it hit the when price hit the 92s and people went away for the weekend, instead of being super bullish, being like, yeah, we gotta buy more. Instead, they spent the weekend saying, we gotta sell this bad boy. And that's what they did. They came in and they sold it. So chances are it's not as bullish as they thought. D Dog, uh, it looks pretty good. Yellow bar signal. Much bigger volume. It got much bigger volume as the week progressed. So that's that's bullish. Might have to consider that one. Dell with a box breakout. Volume is light, but in a good market, you know that no reason it can't work. ELF. Oh, I gotta post my my stop. I tried it in here and I got stopped like almost to break even right in there so the trade didn't really work I, I, I was messing with it at 97 a little higher now it came down 95 just not so good see how it went up and then sort of futzed around and I came back down there were clearly more sellers on Friday who are like we gotta get out of elf we gotta sell it which is sort of you know a shame but the fact that I'm out of it if elf for some reason goes down this next week then I'm gonna be really happy I sold it because we know from an example that look at this down 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 there's the white bar sell signal and look how red volume has really picked up red red green red 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 all of a sudden that flow of dollars has gone to the red instead of the green so we got to be aware of this and and the red are bigger than these two greens. So people are really looking to sell this thing, which surprises me, but that's okay. You know, and I might, let's change this actually to the uh, more bearish look. Now it may recover or it may not, but I'm not into it. EMPH, I, I list this as a possible trade if it triggered. But look at that, it never triggered. So signal, reaction to signal, price did, did not trigger, so there's no trade. So we'll take this off and look at this, it keeps going down. I think this looks bearish. It wasn't able to do anything. And we saw, we saw from the tan how miserable solar is, so just as well we didn't buy anything there. Thank God it didn't it didn't trigger. This one, oh, hit the moving average, but uh, too hard. Uh, I did buy Monday M N D Y. Same same deal as E N P H. Signal, reaction to signal trigger, price triggered. I am long. Now we just got to see, we got earnings and hopefully we don't get roast cooked on earnings. That's all right. Cause even if I get cooked on it, it's not a big position and my other stocks are making, I'm making so much money. I, I, I won't even notice. Like sell H, the money I made on sell H will more than pay for anything that goes wrong on, on MNDY. Netflix. 
Netflix. I am long Netflix. And this is the difference. We had a box breakdown here, not interested. Sell, sell, oh, a blue signal. But then what do we know about blues? They have a tendency to fail the next, next week. And this one did, but then, wow, look at this one. Huge green volume. And, and it totally blasted higher. That is what caught my eye, and I set the trigger here. It did trigger the next week. I didn't, I didn't take it, but I, I realized that I, I reinitiated it, and I said, you know, if it triggers again, I want to buy it. So I did, and I'm long, and look at that. We're making money. Woo, woo. And then we got Uber right here. This is a textbook box breakout. I am long Uber. Got to put this on the right, right list. And, oh, I'm running out of time. I've already gone way too long. We're barely getting into it. There's just so many signals to get through. So, list four. The bearish ones. Bearish, bearish. Ah, Tesla. Tesla hasn't done anything to get off this list. White bar sell signal. What is that? The tan uh, inverse hammer signal. Not good. Blue bar excessive optimism. And then next next bar failure. And it's light, it's light gray. So that's an inside week. So we got to be careful. It's setting up for a potential signal. And that signal could be on the downside. Look at volume. Volume is muted. So there's no... Volume's not telling us anything. So Tesla, avoid. There's nothing going on there. Uh, Workday, eh, recovering with the market. Nothing special in, all, in any of that, so I'll leave it there. List five, these are the bearish stocks. They probably had some of the <clears throat> biggest moves uh, the last, last two weeks because the most bearish ones usually react. I need to turn around. Hey, Apple. Yellow bar signal. All right, we'll move this to list three. Bullish. If Apple's going up, then the market's going to be just fine. Airbnb. Who the hell stays in Airbnb? A cleaning, huge cleaning fees? No thanks. Uh, look at this one. From Darling to... To smoke and crack on the on the sidewalk there. This AI, eh? But this signal triggered positive, and then it came right back down. This is a just a hard one. Watching it, but not interested. Volume, there's still no volume. Look at this, nothing down there. App, oh, box breakout. Look at that. Change the list. Uh, this one, no signals. Ooh, pink bar, look out, be careful. <laughs> Bill, little <laughs> thunk. Look at that, sell, sell. I'm saying get the heck out. This one right here, recovery, blue bar, comes back in. Uh, potential signal two weeks ago, what happened? Did not trigger, so we take it off. Inside week, that's Crocs, no interest. Uh, Chevron, uh, no interest. Anything. Oh, first solar. Look how this keeps going down. Fastly, nothing going on there. Although this is a potential box right here. Compassing this, oops, this box range like right about there. No reason to touch that one. Eh. Ah, more evidence, blue bar, pull back. Google, this one's impressive. White bar, sell signal, 
big dump on earnings, and all it does since then goes right back up. But Google makes a ton of money, so that's not to me. That's not surprising. This one former AI darling. Now it's just the ugly stepchild. Nothing there. Oh, how many more of these are we gonna see before before this starts to really make sense? Oh, net, nothing. Well, I suppose this could be considered bullish. This company's just so overvalued. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, box breakdown here. This is oil company. It's a shame. I tried to trade it in here. I didn't just as well because look at this. It's, this has become a mess ever since I left. On. <laughs> I mentioned this before. I remember a Twitter guy who gave me so much grief over this one telling me how great it was and all that. And yeah, that was back in, back, back in here. Could have even been a year ago. Now look at it now. Just a mess. Any trading signals here? Uh, maybe an inside week on Opera. Oracle rebounding. Well, it's in the part of the QQQ, so of course it's rebounding. Oh, Qualcomm. Look at that. Total mess down here. Blammo. That's worthy of putting it in the bullish side. Roblox, look at that. That's, uh, I believe that was earnings right there. I don't like Roblox, so I'll leave it there. Uh, rig coming back down. Inside weak signal, but nothing really going on. Rivian, everybody's car company, the electric car company that loses tons of money. White bar sell signal, downtrend. Now a pink bar signal, that means pay attention. So if anybody's still long this, <laughs> I pray for you. Chances, odds of a downward resolution are high. I, would, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't own it. Roku, oh, God, look at that. How's anybody supposed to trade this? It gave a signal here that they didn't want it. Shooter bar or an inside inverse hammer. Down, 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 down as the market came down. And then, blam, recovers it all. But up here in this zone is all where they were selling it. So they took it right back up to where people can sell it. It's just ridiculous. Well, it's bullish, but it's just it's just so impossible. How are you supposed to trade that? Shot. Yeah, look at that. Back up into the box. That's a bullish bullish move. How are you supposed to trade that? <laughs> so far, the one everybody every retail trader loves. It can't even stay up into its Darvis box. Ugh, just a piece of crap. Why do people love it? I don't know. STAA, one of my faves, but I just couldn't make it work. And rightfully so. Look at this horrible trend. It's just awful. So I keep an eye on this one just in case. This one here, nice rebound on earnings. Honestly, would you have bought on this signal? Not me. TTD got screwed. Look at this. Box breakdown here. Rebound with the yellow bar and then blammo. Dump a, dump a Rama. It's just so hard. But this sucks. And I wouldn't own TTD. It, it had its glory. See, look at this. Look at all this crap in here. This has been a nothing stock. In fact, I don't even think I should even follow this one. That's how bad it is to me. Oh, and then upstart. <laughs> you know, nothing here. Pink signal. 
but maybe upstart comes around. ZS, this is, I see a box here, right in here. So technically this is a box breakout. Just a hard one. There's better out there. All right, almost done. Let's go into the last list and then we'll wrap this up. Look at that big breakout and of uh, Broadcom went sideways in its Darvis box, never threatened. So really, was there any reason to have sold it? No. Granted, you had to sit sideways from June to now. That's one, two, three, four, five months. But if you held on to it and sat with it, you just got rewarded. Patience, Grasshopper. Did I just put that? Yeah. Axon, that is a bear signal shooter bar. Put the trigger below it. Not that I'm going to trade this one, but... You know, let's just recognize when something looks like that. Berkshire, well, if Berkshire is up, that means America is up. So, BTU, coal, look at that. That's negative. White bar cell signal. Avoid. Nothing there. Carvana. <laughs> I remember seeing on Twitter somebody was. So a whole bunch of people were all psyched about Carvana. We're going to buy it. We got the thing. I knew Carvana wasn't going to do anything. Blue bar signal. Duh. And look, there's the pullback. Is there anything on the daily? No. The car market is upside down. So who cares? Sideways sideways oh there's a yellow bar look at that that's positive we'll put this on the bullish list you know not going to do anything that's positive uh meta oh box breakout this here is mystery stock i've owned this since uh august and i own a pretty big chunk of this and uh, it's one of my best ones of the year. And it's already about to double. It's now a textbook Darvis box breakout. This one's thin, but if you buy it, buyer beware. That's all, I'll, that's all I'll say. But I like it and I own a bunch. Uh, Microsoft going higher. Look at that. Amazing. Oh, steel. Now notice I'm not doing anything with this. NVIDIA here. These are box breakouts, but they do not have big volume. So they're bullish, but they're missing an ingredient in my opinion. However, that does not mean they cannot work. Higher is higher. But what I prefer is when they've got a big volume uh, move. So far, nothing and no signals. Yes, no, there's a signal, but in the middle of a giant box, so who cares? Uh, and that, that wraps it up. Last thing I want to show you is the S&P 500 earnings. So we got new estimates. Uh, let's see, here are the old estimates. They declined considerably to the new estimates. The new numbers created uh change the curve of the growth that's coming what happened is even though we had some near-term declines the comps got better when the comps get better the future growth rate went up and if the future growth rate goes up then that is fuel for voila instant bull market this stuff goes hand in hand. Higher growth leads to higher prices.
because we are getting more in the future, not less. And I'll just say this, the S&P 500 is just an incredible money-making machine. Look how, look how these go up, $50 a share. In historical contrast, when we look back at the beginning of the data here, the S&P 500 for years made three, four, five, six dollars per share. Now it's making $50 a share. Isn't that incredible? 10 times. Profits are up 10 times in the last uh, 30 years, 40 years. That's amazing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck trading uh, this week. And I hope you guys uh, all have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.